I had a brain fart like last week. I couldn't decide whether three quarters was more or less than two thirds. Well, is it better or worse that you're doing that with things all the time and just don't notice? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> like the panic is exactly, am I just noticing this now? Is, is there other yeah. places where I'm doing that? Like while I'm teaching? While I'm... The answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, and if not totally yes, soon. I think I'm going through a midlife crisis, like without a doubt. And along with that crisis, it is a crisis of, uh, related to, to my creative practice as a whole. And so I'm like the main things that come to mind are not specific, like stuff li lying on the floor of my editing room, but rather like, like entire strands of practice. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about my current position in relationship to composition as a notated practice that serves a sort of a system that we that inherited from classical music, which, which is a place that I spent a couple of decades playing at. I don't come from that world, as, as you guys know. I come from, from, from being part of a band and from, from making music with a, with a small group of friends and, and crafting and shaping and changing and, and, and acknowledging that change over time and on stage and on rehearsal room and in the recording room, like, like it, a very sort of involved experimental practice, experimental in terms of the methodology. Like at, at the time, obviously, we didn't know to call it that or, or what that meant in terms of strategy, but it's definitely what it was. And, and from that practice grew an interest into different forms of, of uh, exploration and complexity. And the idea of a composer from a pre-internet Costa Rican world was very attractive uh, in terms of what you could do uh, with sound and with the kind of music, musical expertises that you could uh, collaborate with to, to make music. When I left to study composition, I encountered a world that was very different from what I predicted, but I took it head on, like I just went for it. Like I, I learned to write music basically in the, in the classical tradition, not, not to make classical music. And that's something I never excelled at, uh, even though it was part of this, of, of what the things that one was supposed to achieve in conservatory education. It was not something I, I was good at, but definitely the sort of, uh, the type of collaboration and, the and the methodology of the practice was something that I, that I learned, which is there's a, a specific instrumentation and a group of people that execute those roles. And there's a distance between those two, which is one of the problems. And then there's a, an action of, of making this music symbol in, in a symbolic way on paper, right? The music is crafted graphically as notation for, for someone to, to interpret. And that's, that was exhilarating because it is, it is magic actually, right? Like it, it's, it's such a different process than being part of a, of a close knit rock band. Uh, and it sort of opens a world of, of collaboration that at the moment feels infinite. And, and it actually, in some ways, it was like you can do so many interesting things and things change so much in the process in ways that you can't quite, and because the process is slow, you can notice that change in ways that you can't quite follow when you're working in a close knit project. Right? The fact that I make a thing, it changes when I notate it. I bring the notation, it changes when it's inter like all those degrees of change became, all those translation uh, skips became very interesting to me. But as I started to find a, a way to, to, to make a music, that, the music that I wanted to make, whatever that means, I started to make music in a way that, refl that, that definitely was shared a foundation with the way that I had practiced in my, in my original bands. But I was in some ways figuring out ways of, of, of bringing that world to classically trained musicians in a chamber music setting. Uh, so to create scores, that led to situations like the ones we had we had together uh, in a place of warm love designed uh, in the 90s. And I was lucky enough to find people that for that with whom I could do that, that could that were interested in that path, that were had something to gain from that path themselves so that we could all benefit from that for a limited amount of time and make some versions of that that were satisfying, but that gave me an impression of what could be done that was not that I didn't know I was not going to be able to, to, to scale up or to, or to scale out of that situation. There's the idea of making a, a close knit collaboration is less likely. And there are good examples of that and, and beautiful examples of that, but it's definitely not the norm. Having experienced what, what felt like, like in, internally success with, with my own group doing that, I tried to export that to the commissions that that led to. 
and it failed in ways that I that I couldn't have guessed. And and it took me a long like many years to figure out that I was the problem and that my that then that my plan was the problem. And spent many years resenting this scene for not welcoming this beautiful thing <laughs> that I was bringing to them, which was actually just a fucking imposition, like 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 a cruel, unwelcome um, imposition on their time, on their lives, on their on their love for what they did. And that's something that I'm trying to um, unpack now. And, and just to kind of qualify the scale, like the the magnitude of this horror that you imposed on these. Unsuspecting these, on these poor musicians was the nature of collaboration, exploration, and play. The amount of attention that I was requiring of them that 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 was outside of what they expected from the project, outside of the amount of hours that they expected to give to the project, uh, and outside of the amount of this of, of the kinds of decision making that I was asking of them. So I was asking them to do a very different job from what their job is and from what they're experts at, which. Aside from that imposition, it also put them in a place where they could they could fail and not look as good as as a, as they're used to be as to, to being, given that these were professional high level performers in, in, in all of these examples. So it was not a, it, it was not a, it was not a kind thing that I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was not obviously I was not coming from a place of um, egoism and, and, I, and, and that imposition was coming from an invitation. Like none of these ensembles were asking um, for music, not knowing the kind of music that I was doing, but definitely not not knowing because I didn't have a way to make that clear what it entailed. So I guess the the to, like to connect the line from band writing to being a composer was some of the attraction there of complexity or fidelity, and to maybe differentiate one in terms of like the amount and, and of detail that can be imagined slash realized, what, whatever those vehicles are, versus the facility with which to do them, if those are different things. Like, what was the, the sort of, what transitioned you from one to the other, at, at like, at the kind of the start of that? I had started inviting musicians in, like, extra musicians in. We were a trio and write a part for them. And when I listened back, what was interesting about that was the interplay between in real time arrangement of the trio, negotiating with the written part of the duo, and the duo itself negotiating their written part over a grid that was changing. That was what was interesting. Looking, this is my perspective from now. In the moment, I didn't, I, I couldn't see that clearly. I think I, I think I was charmed by the fact that I had put something on paper and it was being played. So there was, I would love to think that it was not a matter of, of being fascinated with the power of that. I don't remember feeling powerful. I think it was more the, the offlineness of it, that I could do something offline for execution online. That seemed like wow, that's I could that would that would be an interesting thing to become good at designing things for performance. And it was, it actually turned out to be fascinating. Like some of the things that I, that I did with my, with my group in the UK were, were beautiful processes of, and, 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 and the friendships and things that we learned that emerged from that and the things that we learned together couldn't have otherwise happened if, if we were not all interested in, in the things that we were interested in. But I didn't know that, that its life was necessarily limited, that I couldn't do that forever. Not only could I, could I not do that forever in terms of moving forward to working with other groups like composers do, but I couldn't do it forever with, with my group because even people doing that, once we have uh, <laughs> adult lives and responsibilities and expenses and ailments and psychological and physical, like suddenly there's just less room. There's a thing that you can do until you're like 26 that you can't do after. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying 26, it could, whatever, you know, like it depends on, on people's lives and privileges and, and lack of, but yeah, yeah, it's interesting to, to consider that as a, as a teacher of, of mostly early people in the early 20s, like whether the things that you're uh, training them to do are things that they can do as they age, or are these things that can only be done while you're, while you're under 30 in terms of like as, as a life. Yeah. I mean, maybe some of like the like what we should be teaching people who are in their early 20s is like a musical hospice, like what to do in, in the, 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 their soon and upcoming demises. Because <laughs> I, I get some of that. And, and I, I understand that there is like, there's an aspect to it, which I don't know if this is 
part of what you're getting at there, but that one can expect more of oneself than one kind of others. And I don't mean this in terms of like, oh, you got to put into work like the, the boot, like it's not a bootstraps things, but in terms of like, um, even like, like, uh, depth of process or depth of the nature of the types of ideas you're getting into. So let's say like, I guess a best case scenario in like a, a composer ensemble context, you have like, you know, X amount of months of like pre-writing communication, let's say like an outrageous 10 rehearsals with the ensemble before a premiere or some, you know, like, like the absolute roof of what this could, like, this is still an amount of hours that is less than would be perhaps required to get to the, the, like the marrow of some kind of interaction you know, the nature of, of concepts, which I guess some of that is... You're saying other than like maybe a superficial exploration of, yes. the, of the ideas initially presented. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess some of the, maybe the, the, the reason that division exists is because that's presumably your job as the composer mm. to, to worry about that. And then you tell the performers what to do about it. So I, I guess my question, like you yourself can do more than uh, you can expect yourself to communicate to someone else in short of like a long-term relationship amount of time? Well, no, I want to make that more specific in this particular domain. So like, that's not always the case. Sometimes you can go to someone with an idea and they can expand on it way better than you can. That's the point of going to an expert. But like going to someone with an abstract idea uh, where it's not your domain or their domain, you're trying to come up with something collaboratively, it's collaboration. And when you're dealing with like individual people with their own personalities and interests and expertise to, I guess, expect a kind of like gelling that's almost like magical to come up with a thing that actually works might be less uh, likely than it is unlikely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that is the problem that is there to be exp uh, explored. I think it's different different ways of, of determining what collaboration is. Not, not to get into semantics, let's, we can just say that collaboration is when many people are involved and there's many types. Like the type that Rod was talking about, where like yeah, you're, you, the, the thing that you can give to your project, when you say your project, you're kind of putting, it's the thing that you're ruminating about, it's the thing that you're cooking, it's the thing that you're uh, obsessing about. When you bring people in, no matter how um, well-trained or good people or available or well-paid, like whatever, it is, it is a thing that they'll check in and check out of, if they're healthy people, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which, you know, and they will have lives and partners and uh, rent to pay and meals to cook and so on. I have been part of projects, as, as I'm sure you guys have as well, where, where enough of the people involved are uh, similarly invested that that authorial sort of uh, differentiation, uh, it's, it's suddenly it's not even a topic, like the work, you're just making the work. Um, that seems to be ideal for, for, for me. Um, the scenario that, that classical music proposes is different. There's roles that we're playing and, and functions that we have with limits. Uh, and we're different, the bringing the different kinds of expertises that we're bringing mean that we can't ever level those things in relationship to the previous version where we're all invested in the same way. Even if we're all interested, the, the way that we can participate and improve the project are very different. I was wondering, because you have had that, that experience with some performers, is that some of your, if you could qualify it, is that some of like your favorite music now? Because you did manage to like get that like lightning in a bottle type collaboration going where you're all equally invested in this thing that you are co-creating. What, what would you say is the, the difference between the work, if anything at all? Or is there, or is there just like random, is one process qualitatively better in your opinion? Like in terms of output? That's a great question, but I, I don't know that I can, that I can be very impartial about that. Because so much of the making work is about making the work, right? Uh, it's about the time that you spend with the people. It's like it's, I, I find myself revisiting that work, th those works more often. That's for sure. But I don't know if it's a if it's a practice of uh, if that is tinted with the experience, right? If it's it's the love that you feel from it from from the work is the love that you experience making it. <laughs> no, yeah, that's that's a, actually a really good answer, and I wouldn't want or expect you to remove your own like subjectivity from it i can also say that those the, the the works that have been part of that process have had a better life a longer more uh social life let's say <laughs> how much of that do you think is is intrinsic to the work or or the context with which the work exists so like 
you write a piece for an ensemble or a performer and they're going to play and the ritual is is such built in that like that can happen many times whereas if you kind of do a one-off staged performance context like that that context is not necessarily going to happen again so it's like it's sort of intrinsically like do you think it has a, a longer life because of the ritual in which it was created slash occupies or do you think it because uh, on on aesthetic grounds or or in what way do you mean that i guess sorry can you explain that a little better like what do you mean if you write music for people people will play the music if you write music with a specific time bound collaboration in a specific concert situation that's not going to happen again oh okay Okay, so, okay. like, if someone's here and we go and we go in a cave and we, we write some music together, that's not going to happen again. So, like, it's just limited just by the design. I mean, that's to use a slightly more exaggerated thing, but I do know that a lot of the work that you do now is, like, this sort of collaborative institute situ kind of thing. Sure. Yeah, well, it, it, for sure it's intrinsic, right? Like, 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 if we're not able to get inside the work and, and, and understand the ways in which it can exist, and, and, and here we're talking about a work that is designed, right, like, like something that can be recognizably reproduced multiple times, even if with, with infinite variations. No matter how invested we are in it, if we if its life is very short, there's a depth that we can't reach with it. There's we don't fully understand the its its potentials and powers and problems and issues. And it's nice when a work has enough of a life that you get to experience it it rising, dipping, and then rising again. <laughs> Uh, and I think it is. It is. It seems to me it is there where where it truly becomes becomes a thing that you're that you're writing, as in R I D I N G. Um, right, right. Like like Sisyphus on 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 the way down the hill at the end of the first night, being like, you know what, that wasn't so bad. That you know, I could I could see myself getting into this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> But uh, but that doesn't the 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 the, um, the the possibility of that happening doesn't always line up with the with the I, I'm thinking of work of work that has been carried through by by the people that it was made with and for for long enough that the work settles and becomes recognizably writable, <laughs> and then other groups take it and can write it as well, which is is, is an interesting thing. Like there's a sort of like blossoming of the work that that most often doesn't seem there's an opportunity for it to have because it is more survived um to ask a, a question in, in an app like i want to ask this in a purposefully very roundabout way so um mm -hmm. there's this guy that makes this art project uh i is think it's it called Wait, no, no. <laughs> that, that's like, the spoiler you know okay. like <laughs> Voila! <laughs> Where it's it's this art project. I think it's called All Possible CDs, and the idea being that um, the music that can fit on a CD is finite, and by that, like mathematically, there's only so many amounts of bits and encoded and blah 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 blah. You know, and it goes on and on to say that you know, so not only is like all all of Beethoven's nine symphonies, but his next nine and and so on, like a, the Beatles' Gray album. So it's basically all possible musics, right? In in this kind of like. Uh, you know, library of Babel kind of way. Um, except the only thing that isn't, that can't fit on this is something that is longer than that, or rather that spans more than one thing. So there's, it's all possible musics, except the specific criteria in which that the boundaries of that um, system. system are made of, right? So all of this is a sort of like a side metaphor in terms of... Um, the kind of music that can be realized within a composer ensemble relationship, even in a, like a platonic ideal way, is the music that you found yourself wanting to make something that could not happen in that, um, even in like, let's say a best scenario. So did you, did the material that you wanted to realize outgrow that relationship or was the movement more because you did say a, a bit ago that like the the work is the process of making the work or something along the lines of that or was that process something that you no longer found satisfying so i guess it's a kind of a chicken and an egg question um with a little well bit i think he did there. work that into the context that's kind of the point it's just that that um the ability to do that had a expiration date on it you know you can only or maybe like you'll find another pocket you know in a decade or so but uh you did bring that 
to this world you found that edge i mean if it is an, an edge i mean i guess you did say that that like it, it was time bound but i if if that wasn't the case would you have carried on making music in that way that's part of the, the of the thing that i'm wrestling with inside my head and i wonder like i'd be interested in your reflections on this like i find myself making decisions about my path or recognizing that i've made a decision about my path and sometimes I don't know if that is a decision that is artistically informed, uh, logistically informed, or sort of survival of of my ego informed. For example, like just with, with moving to Vancouver, as I finally settle here, my daughter is born and COVID happens, which means that suddenly like the reality of my world is very different in terms of what I can do with my day. And the way that I've reasoned this is that there's no way that in the in the limited amount of time that I have in my studio, I'm going to spend it drawing a score. I know that's not the fun part. There's a joy that I that I take in that process, but, but the funnest part is when I'm in the room with the people. But I don't like it. I, I never enjoyed it where I, I would write a piece for six months and then go and be in the room with the people for one or three days. Like the ideal for me was, as I had with my group, which was this sort of iterative thing. We're together, I go to, I go to my studio, come back, be together, go back to the studio, come back. And it's just a process of iterative revision of... of of different modes of, of accessing the artwork. You uh, speculate it and design it, then you realize it based on that speculation, then you listen to that realization and talk about it, and then you go back to re-speculating. And that, that cycling was what was, was exciting for me. If the process only had one turn, I speculated, got realized, I heard it, bye. Like that's as unsatisfying as it can get. <laughs> So if I was going to be writing music for, for the ensembles of where I used to live half a world away, it was not going to be a lot better than that, the process. So the way that I decided to start to make music was let's just, you know, let's, I basically started um, whatever invitation I, I get to make a work, I would convert it to let's get together. But I did get one opportunity to make a, com a comparison by pure mistake, uh, by pure organizational error where I was writing a work for, for a group. And then a work that I was going to write after that one got rescheduled to be premiered like a month after the work that I was writing, which meant there was no way I was going to be able to write that second work. So I took that opportunity. I'm making little earmarks with my fingers <laughs> there to try that out, which is something I had been thinking about loosely. Like, how do I change this situation? And I said, how about I just, I, I'll get there and we'll make the work the week that we were going to rehearse it instead. So within a month, I got to test one piece that I wrote for six months and then got rehearsed versus a piece that I made in one week and then got played. And that's not of enough of, a, of, a, of an experiment, right? Like that doesn't prove anything. It's just one case. It's a pr problematically small sample observed by problematically <laughs> biased uh, researchers. But, <laughs> and if we know how much uh, an artwork and a collaboration can vary from one to the other, this is not a valid ex experiment of anything. But it is, but it is one, <laughs> an invalid one. And what I, what I found was that the, the product... Going back to Ange's question about the, the result, the difference between one and the other was not enough in the in the six, seven month one versus the one week one to justify six, seven months of work. And I'm, there I'm kind of implying that the, that the long one was better than the other. Actually, the, the, the one that we performed in a week survived and it's and it's a good recording and and we've done mul multiple performances of it and other groups have then figured out ways to play it even though it doesn't have a score. The other one... Um, no, it doesn't. It didn't survive. It was a it was a great occasion, and we had a lot of fun in that performance. But it didn't. It, it is it is irreproducible, <laughs> even though it was designed for reproducibility. Hmm. As I said, this is a very imperfect example, but it, it it gave me a moment to experience past life, future life. Yeah, I mean that's really interesting, and a lot of this, like throughout this conversation, there's a lot of like parallels that we've had in our creative life. It, you know, it's sort of in different times and different reasons and stuff like that. So there's a lot of uh, parallels. And that's that's one that, like, is aesthetically interesting because, like, the the sort of long-winded then short-winded question I asked is is one that, for me, I guess I agree with your speculation there. And I, I would likely agree with your outcome, like, you know, given the same works and comparing them. But in terms of how I've decided to, like, organize my life and what I do creatively and all that, like, I've arrived at a similar place as well. 
but I think some of that is like there's also philosophical reasons and, you know, that there's a whole we're, we're all multidimensional kind of things. But there is, um, I guess, a long winded agreement there. Well, since you asked about how well, I'll just call it multidimensionality of intention, I guess, I kind of feel like sometimes I'm just like a passenger, not in like a woo woo kind of way, but like I feel like I'm like becoming a different person chemically. I used to be really good at figuring out shallow depth of field focus. I no longer have that ability. And as a result, like, so I have to wear glasses while I'm shooting, but it's still not as good as how my eyes were before. And so I'm like still slightly sometimes out of focus when I really want that fucking thing in focus that's only this small or whatever. I go back to the footage and I, I'll have missed it. And it's like, oh, fuck. But that's probably also why I don't do as much video stuff. And probably helping the oil painting, <laughs> to be quite frank. <laughs> I was in Belgium earlier in the summer and I went to the sort of old masters wing of the museum. And uh, yeah, and there's a lot of talk about the, yeah, as they, as they age, how much their painting changes because of their lack of eyesight. So yeah, that's a big component. We're always changing as people and we're human in these bodies and like shit changes. And I think that manifests in the work. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like the pressures, let's quote unquote, of uh, being slotted into a different kind of way of working or medium came from two things. Yeah, part of it is ego. I seem to already have some footing and experience and the things that make it, that can allow me to make it at a certain level. And also the negative uh, or the things that would have like downplayed the other ways of working in my life. So like I'm no longer interested in making like sequential work. There's a lull. I didn't have any uh, narratives or stories to play with. So it's like a weather system. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, I'm over here, even though that did take some time, as I said, and that, that time is uncomfortable. So how much of that is conscious? I don't know. I, as I said, it feels like not exactly random, but like a confluence of of things. And I'm glad that I go through these changes, even though they seem quite disparate from one another. Do you guys ever read Andrea Agassi's autobiography? No. I heard it in an audiobook and I, I remember really enjoying it. But um, I was a tennis kid when I was like 10. And, and that's when he was like like popular. But uh, the funny thing, like he fucking hates the sport. like And speaks of hating it every single day. Like just waking up and thinking, fuck this shit. Like just painting his body. like And just continuing to win. And just winning, winning. I mean, I, I don't know how much we can believe that. But it's, it's a Greek tra tragedy example. Yeah, to kind of, I guess, answer your question, I, I like if something does well or if somebody likes something and there's like, oh, yeah, you should do more of this. Like I, I have like a, an instinctual dubiousness of it. Some of that is because I've, I've harbored a lot of this kind of concern slash worry of, of like creative impetus, freedom, intent kind of thing. So like I've been very protective of that intention. I mean, I, I'm also a person, so I'm sure like, yeah, ego is is always suaved and you know like there are things that i'm sure that happen that are outside of my below my conscious ability to do anything about it but i i have tried to have some measure of of um distance from that right like cautious and suspicion like so now in the way you're working or exploring working now what things are you tempering or bring to those relationships like what's what's different it seems if i look at the projects that are that are ongoing right now they're all they're all pretty pretty flat hierarchies in terms of ownership in terms of process and investment and authoriality like there's often will there will be a person that is leading it um logistically or financially like finding a way to make it happen when when particularly when we're, when we're not in the same city it relates also to um for example i'm part of a it's kind of a trio quartet now across disciplines with a choreographer and a, and a light designer and a, a person that acts like a dramaturg i think would be the, the name even though there's no narrative but a, a person that is an outside eye and part of the intent has been how do we make a thing where it is not that i am making music for your dance it is not that you're dancing to my music it is not that you're lighting her dance it is not that you're following my music to make it but rather how can we as three artists with peculiar specializations but with a an opinion on all of those factors make a thing as if we were a band which also means that it's not that i'm giving opinions on the lights necessarily like the light guy is the light guy like the bass player is the bass player 
but uh, if I'm the guitar player and you're the bass player and, and there's a clash in our chord, we have a conversation about it or, or, or we see a potential in that clash. We like, oh, there's that clash. Let's let's look at an, into a way of, of turning that into a thing. And it's been like profoundly pleasurable. And I have no real view on the work because I'm so inside of it. But we have this fourth person that is a super awesome, smart person that can that knows that has a knowledge of the work and of its process and on, 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 on how it's emerging. So that's that's really fun. I, I would do that forever. Like that could be the thing that I do for the foreseeable future. If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.